All right, we got thrashed by this yesterday while playing one of our Explorer decks. It looked pretty powerful, so uh, Indomitable Creativity, obviously. Anybody that's been playing Historic or Explorer no Stranger this card, one of the best ways to cheat something into play in the format. And then this deck is using it to cheat things into play that are things we can be casting anyway. So we got four Torrential Gear Hulk as the thing we're largely cheating into play. And then we've got a variety of things that make treasure tokens to target with the Dominable Creativity. The base kind of best setup for us is you can discard Magma Opus to make a treasure token. And then on turn four, you Creativity the treasure token made by Opus. Gear Hulk hits play and flashes back Opus. So we're kind of a, a blue-red control deck with an I win button. Kind of Splinter Twin-esque vibes, honestly. So... Uh, I forgot to put Borderless Lands in here. Let's go ahead and do that really quick. And then we'll pop on into some Explorer matches with this and see how it feels for us here today. Ranked. Best of three. Explorer. Selected our deck. We have successfully play Bleeded. Hey, Tumo's one month away from seven years. The first badge for a reason. Welcome back, it's been a trip. Is my account in 84 months yet? It isn't. Tumo's has the same sub tenure as my account. But you get you get auto sub to your own your own Twitch channel. Yeah, it was partnered, partnered back then. Cause uh, affiliate, affil listen, chat. Back in my day, Twitch affiliate didn't exist. Are we playing a mirror? I might be playing a mirror. That always works out that way, right? Like, there's a deck that seems kind of powerful, and we haven't really played against it, and then like we queue up with it for the first time, and it's just like immediately a mirror match. The borderless chandeliers do look great, for sure. They haven't put an opus in the bin yet. Do I tap out for Fable? Probably not. I think I'm supposed to just leave commands up here. Question on this turn will be, do I want to jam a big score potentially into a sensor? We'll just shock this, make a treasure token. Now I can go land into Fable of Verone. Oh, 
One of the nice things about this archetype is, you know, you're not just caught with a uh, uncastable creativity target in your hand. You got Fire Prophecy to tuck them in. I assume my goblin is going to die here before I attack. I mean, we're never just casting Opus into a, into a, what's it called? No, today was always live on the schedule. I was, I was late to be live this morning, so I was up way too late last night, but. Pretty sure. Calendar says, yeah, yeah, calendar says arena and then snap. Turns obviously good. I conceded there, by the way, because they were going to Sublime Epiphany a bunch of stuff back on us. Fire Prophecy seems not great. Command is great. I think we turn big score because the counter spells are likely to have post board. Good here. SSG. Yeah, yeah, we put it in this with the one solar guide lantern we have. Oh, that's why there's only one lantern. I was trying to think why there was only one lantern. Yeah, the lantern has a huge opportunity cost for messing up our creativity. Is that's true? As this this has artifacts too. Even even the one is probably an ambitious inclusion at that rate. Creativitying things this game, I don't think. Well, I guess it, uh, this card's pretty difficult to cast post board at a Mystic Dispute game.
Just try and do this. I assume we're getting Mystic to speed in, but I can just kind of like get through that card. We don't have a good answer to it. Welcome back, Exit Zed. I guess they can put a Gear Hulk into play now, but if it's just like one or two, I have Prismari Command, so not that big of a deal. I'm just gonna go ahead and concede. I'm not really having fun playing this mirror match, and uh, they seem to have a lot of cards that are especially good geared for the mirror, like Shark Typhoon and this that they've now resolved, so. Let's just uh, slide along to the next match. I should probably just do that more frequently, make you into a mirror match one. It's just not particularly interesting. Opponent playing this while we're tapped out as uh, trying to make sure it resolves. They must be light on land, so. Huh? That to be a line they want to take. this way. Do Omen of the Sea. We have a Gear Hulk and a Magma Opus and a Flame Rift and two cards. the old gods up. I like the addition of the animation they've done. I am not a huge fan of the duration of the animation. Hopefully, hopefully they speed it up along. We're bidding another opus here. Always been some amount of cheating and magic, but yeah, the fact that um the fact that like even standard involves a lot of cheating things into play these days. Certainly something. Oh my god, I just... God damn it. Well... Well, I guess this is... Just dishing these two. Let me go ahead and Gear Hulk. 
Sublime Epiphany, Copy the Gear Hulk, and then Magma Opus. Yeah, that was more than good enough. Fire Prophecy out. Uh, maybe Big Score out. Yeah, probably. I don't think I want Aether Gust, even though they're Sultai. Are they? Actually, they're probably the Ultimatum deck, right? So Aether Gust is pretty good against Ultimatum. So it probably is a card I want. Made sure my uh, creativity. This is the plan. We're going down to 12 ways to enable it. I like that, I think. We're the baddies. I'm not a baddie. I'm just a byproduct of the magic format in which I'm being raised. Chat, my opponent's playing a companion, and I am not. It is very clear which one of us is the bad guy here and which one isn't, okay? Destiny Spinner. Okay. A little, a little windy in here. <laughs> My opponent has had enough of these shitty blue cards, Chet. Get the blue cards out of here. Just a big old, big old cup of dope. So obviously the 2-2 two -two off of this isn't long for this world. Nothing is long for this world, Chet. Everything is over. Nothing even matters anymore. That was, a, that was a turn late, but we take the thought he's going to turn late, okay? Deal. Deal Arena. Like to draw one magma opus, please. These are a few of my favorite things.
<laughs> One magma opus, please. Chat. What an easy game. Gary, there are three creatures in graveyards. What's going on, Chrono? Thanks for the 31 months. I've mostly decided on the Marvel Snap front. I like the game enough to keep playing it, regardless for the time being, so we're going to snap this afternoon. Thanks for, thanks for 31 months. Glad you're, glad you're enjoying it, too. Definitely an Anger of the Gods. Probably Storm's Wrath matchup, too, honestly. We want more cards that play to the board. Sublime's a little on the clunky side. We'll trim one of those. Big score, mayhaps. Oh no! Hand meat cookie jar. Oh, they took my sensor instead of my spell land. Deal. The snap officially out, or are they in beta? They're in closed beta still, technically. They're fully out in the Philippines and New Zealand and Australia. And if you don't live in one of those regions, you can sideload with the Google search. Yeah, they're taking a land for sure as well. Let's we ditch these two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you live in one of those geo regions, you can just like install it. Meaning if you use a VPN, like say my sponsor Nord VPN, you can, to get into one of those regions, you could just install it well now. Oceanic being the primary release feels strange. It's not strange at all for anybody who understands the mobile game market. Oce Oceanic is a huge mobile game market. One, one of, if not the biggest in the world.
I would like this Gear Hulk, and he's lonely, chat. My Gear Hulk friend is lonely. He would like a Gear Hulk friend, chat. Yeah, this deck is actually Splinter Twin. It's just like slightly less deterministic Splinter Twin. Australia, big on mobile games. Oh, it's in that same region as Oceana. It's that whole, whole geo region, basically. Not a great hand for being on the draw. We'll have a sensor. And then we have turn five gear hulk opens, but turn five gear hulk opens is almost assuredly too slow. We need a peace interaction before then. We really need like a fire prophecy. It'd have been right to just cycle this, honestly. in this format at some point. Cute see Blanos. One of the things that struck me as amusing and kind of a uh, people are their own worst enemy sort of way, Win Magus, is there was a discussion where free to play players were complaining that even if the Nexus events that Snap put out were $20 for a card, that would still be too expensive and unacceptable. And it was just like big laughs and Magic the Gathering energy is my thought process. And that's, that's why like evaluating feedback from your end users is so like, it's a, it's a weird line to have to do in a lot of instances. It's like you're at, you're, there's a bunch, there's a large segment of people that no matter what you price things at, they're going to be upset. And, like, obviously, the line that they went with to start is awful and unacceptable. Like, regardless of what number they land on, there's going to be people that tell them it's awful and unacceptable. All right, so Sublime's definitely out. We're leaving in Opus and Gear Hulk for sure. Aether Gus and some Sheep Sweepers come in here.
Sublime Epiphany is my favorite card to play in a Mystic Dispute. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, this deck seems miserable in other blue decks, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like, the price of Mythic Wild cards in Magic Arena is $18, effectively, right? And you, you frequently need four, four mythics. I assume what market you care about depends on what type of game you're making a lot too. Like Magic the Gathering, for example, makes a good chunk of its money off of off of North America. So much as the predatory nature. Yeah, it's like card games card games have always been predatory. Or the, or the original gotcha game right here, chat. We're number one. We're number one. God, sensors look bad against our opponent's deck full of one drops in this set. And they don't run something into it here. I'm just going to cycle it. We really need to hit Anger or Fire Prophecy or something. Even that might not be enough. There's a good chance they're sitting on a... Good chance they're sitting on a spell to prowess this. Narrator, they were. To shock you and loot, please. Definitely that, definitely that. Me thinks. Ether Gust is not a terrible pickup. I assume they're lighting up the stage here. Yep. Plan's a great pickup for them. Ooh, speaking of great pickups. It's long friends. We're at 12, which is low-ish. Remember, this is the easy game too. This is the one where we're on the play. So even if we manage to scrape this out, there's going to be a more challenging game three. Oh gosh. I think we're just torched here, huh? I mean, there's card game predatory, and then there's modern mobile game gotcha predatory. I mean... Not really. Like, maybe you've never had the hooks of a TCG in you the way that, like, mobile games approach it, but, like, man, like, people have been spending four and five figures on Magic the Gathering cards for a long time, just like people do on mobile gotcha games. Ending, ending print runs of things and not bringing those print runs back is just, like, the original fear of missing out. It's all, it's all quite literally the same. Magic's hooks have barbs, they're never coming out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Shoot, Magic, speaking, speaking of vintage decks, does anybody remember when Magic the Gathering put pieces of power into the first Zendikar boosters for quite literally verbatim the gotcha experience. Hey, you should open our $4 booster packs because there could be a Black Lotus in one of these. Just like... <laughs> yeah, there, there's rumors that they're going to do something similar in Dominaria, which is why I recalled it. They confirmed it. Okay, sure.
Legends cards will be in 3% of collector boosters. Are those worth money? Anybody, anybody help me help me out? Are those actually worth money? Oh, Tabernacle is in Legends. Sure. I'd even go out on a limb and make the argument that the whales that are spending 10k on waifus and gacha games, they probably get more enjoyment out of their waifus than a uh, average person does out of their out of their power nine. But that's subjective. <laughs> Just as a general reminder for all kinds of investments, your investment doesn't turn a profit until it's realized. So until until you've turned your Power 9 back into cash in hand, you haven't made extra money with it. It always, it would always crack me up back in the day when people would brag about how much money they've made on on their their deck they'd be like yeah see that's great that you did have an actual investment if you sold it and turned it into something but people people would always talk about how much how much money their modern deck had made it's like well do you plan to sell your modern deck they're like no i'd never do that and it's like okay well let's let's realize that you haven't actually made any money the thing, your sunk cost is just a bigger sunk cost from somewhere else. <laughs> For someone else in the future. Are you supposed to fable here? I feel like we're supposed to fable here. I think I'm sitting on the land for chapter two. Yes, yeah, there's a there's a culture around Magic the Gathering that and to talk about and to talk about predatory and um how people put things in perspective, there's a culture around magic to encourage people to think of it as an investment because if you're investing money instead of just buying magic cards, it's easier to justify spending way more than you would have intended to spend. It's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not spending money on a hobby that isn't really money I have to spend. I'm investing this money into Magic the Gathering cards. They'll, they'll see a return at some point.
I mean, I don't think Watsy so much found uh, found an unopened box. I would I would wager there's probably lots of old unopened products sitting all around, uh, sitting in a basement in Watsy headquarters, waiting for future promos like that. Hey, big USD. Thanks for 16 months. The Gates deck will definitely be one we revisit next week. Was pleasantly surprised by that yesterday. What's going on, Rufio? Thank you for the 20 months. Welcome back. Kind of dying here, chat. Kind of, kind of dying here. Nah, I'm gonna be honest. I haven't really been following anything from the January 6th stuff outside of random clips from Twitter because most of it just makes me angry. I don't need extra anger in my life. So 13 months, Shiro's. Welcome back. Yeah, that mostly. Let me know. Let me know when you're going to start pressing charges. Wait, why didn't they? Did they just miss lethal? They just miss lethal, right? Sure. Take those. We're not dead on board, but we're, we're dead enough at this point. All right, so negate out angers and storms rip in. We trimmed a couple of sensors last time. Want our deck to be good? Uh, this deck has some of the best stats in Explorer as a format. Ninja Turtle Jr., for what it's worth. It was like, flop drowned it into a whole, whole lot that game, but by the, by the numbers, this deck is very reasonable. Indomitable creativity is one of the more powerful things you could be doing in the format, for sure. Sometimes, sometimes the discard deck just chews you up and spits you out, though. Yeah, I know it, no one that was plugged in in and around all the January 6th stuff is like surprised by anything coming out of there, really. The rest, me daddy. I assume we lose sensor or fire prophecy here, depending on what the texture of their hand looks like. We won't cycle censor this turn if they leave it for us because we want to keep them off the three mana play next turn. We'll probably cycle it on three when they choose to play around it. So we'll bend this for now. I expect them to play around the censor that's face up here. We'll cycle it, hopefully hit the red source, and then get to... uh. But, uh, oh, they missed their land drop. Okay, they missed their land drop. I'm just going to chill. Mm, I, re 
we're gonna do just like a normal stream today. Two magic decks and uh, and some snap. When I put when I put more than two things on YouTube, the metrics tend to nosedive. So I'd rather just do like two longer videos rather than try and fit in a third. Punished. Ditch these. Hey, Red Source Creativity. That is exactly what I wanted for Christmas, Jet. Yeah, I don't think a braid's super common in the red black deck. Usually if they wanna they wanna shatter, they play K Command. Full Zakad advantage. The uh audio as the match loads in is kind of jarring after lots of silence. Uh someone had asked what's the sword for? It has been a while. It's going on puddle jumper. Uh that's your training sword. It's usually I give mod swords out to people when they've been subbed for 12 months. the Hoaglandia norm. Uh, we'll just let this happen because, uh, I don't want them to, like, untap and play a Graveyard Trespasser or a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And I assume they're just gonna run it into Sensor again here since they stomped into Sensor. Really? Just nothing. Okay. Deal. This is where the magic happens for those of you that are new to the stream. You do stay houses for the entire year. Welcome back. <laughs> oh, magic's such a shit game sometimes. We actually like aren't even in that good of a spot even if we get set up to creativity because we don't have a uh we don't have uh what's it called the bin they play the other giant out here i think we just like loot and make a treasure is opus in the bin i don't know the Prismari command. The hand isn't creative, it's indomitable. Yeah, that. Okay, they're, uh... My golly. All right, so long friends. 
16 cards. We have a, we have a real shot here, chat. We dis we discarded a Sublime Epiphany. I think I play around to shatter on oh God bless America. We need quick in. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down for quick in. Are you supposed to keep double creativity there? Wait, they took my sensor? They have another discard spell? Why did they take my sensor? Yes. And it's nothing, it's nothing to accomplish a lot, but it's like what I've got. Put a 5-6 into play. Okay, well that lets us discard to kill the trespasser. Do I just start attacking? We're kind of winning the race, right? Oh, fuck me. All right. Oh. I will say that's one thing I don't love about the new, the new templating of day versus night. I really enjoyed that the old wolves gave you a chance to respond to things during the upkeep. It wasn't just like, hey bud, get fucked. So here's a trigger you can respond to like most of Magic the Gathering. I mean, that game wasn't even about the four creativity or the go blank tumos. We were stuck on two fucking lands for forever. Also, in case this is not apparent, by the way, uh, you shouldn't be watching my stream with children if you care about strong language. I had someone complain in a YouTube comment the other day that I was swearing more than I used to. And I just, I've given up making an effort to not swear while I stream chat. Sorry. Magic. Magic the Gathering is a game that sparks more f bombs than joy on average. So, we're just gonna we're just gonna lean into it and say that we're an adult stream. We're killing this. I think we're killing this and bottoming the big score. I can also bottom nothing. Gets the big score. Uh, you can't opus and then creativity because you need four lands. Or you mean opus into creativity this turn cycle? Uh, maybe? Hey, look. Rewarded. Oh. <laughs> 
At one, at one point, way back during the very start of the pandemic, I, uh, I said I was going to make an effort to make the stream more child-friendly when all the kids were at home from school and people were watching, more likely to be watching with kids in the background, but... Alright, let's creativity this token, huh? Magic is a game that sparks more swearing than joy. <laughs> to be fair, it also sparks some joyous moments, too. In fact, it was Mark Rosewater that said the goal of their designs with Magic the Gathering is to elicit strong emotions in both directions. Because things that elicit strong emotions, even when they're occasionally strong negative emotions, tend to be more successful than things that just generate lukewarm feelings on average from people. A product that has 10 people hate it and 10 people love it is far more successful on average than a product that has 20 people who are just feel kind of neutral towards it. That's also kind of how gambling works. That is the psychology that gambling uses, correct? All right, so this is lethal. We did all, did all their trespasser and then smack them. Deal four. It is, Hutch. Although we're at a point where we need to restart the client again here. I'm missing, I'm missing audio for a little bit. Punch from the big scores instead of the sensors this time. Sensor's pretty good on the draw against their deck full of three big three mana plays. And the cheap cycle helps us in our land drops work consistently. It's the third red black deck in a row. Yes, Explorer is mostly playing against red black mid range. To set a low bar, red black mid range isn't the worst best deck to have in a format. I would I would much rather play against red black as a best deck than like the Hinata deck in standards a good example of a deck that's a best deck that just really kind of sucks, right? Like this deck wins through the combat step generally. It's a bunch of two for ones. You can put attrition y stuff in your deck. Yeah. Like, as far as like magic having a bunch of formats in recent memory that are like tier zero spell based combo and control decks, like, I will take a tier zero red black mid range deck. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when, it's like when Jund was the best deck in modern. It's a great, great comparison. It's like, you know, you know what you're, you know what you're signing up for. There's okay ways to attack it. I don't, outside of games where magic happens and I get mana screwed, I never feel like I got scummed out of a game against red black. It's always like, sometimes you get outclassed, but getting outclassed is very different than just getting got, right? 
You don't know how they beat out blue white. I mean, all their cards are just two for one, so they beat out blue white. The gods, they are very angry, Chip. You have four Prismari command in my deck that can shatter this hearse down the line. Uh, that's gonna eat my treasure token, so. I guess we'll use one to cycle a sensor. Oh, I could bounce it, can't I? That's the line here, isn't it? Yeah, totally. I think we just pass, and then we, like, end step, send the hearse back from whence it came, reset the number of things on it, and then, um... We can magma opai. Magma opai! I think I just do this now at sorcery speed because I would like to hit land drop so we can work up to just casting these magma opi from hand. I mean, graveyard hate is good against us. But what I'm doing is powerful. Speaking of powerful, uh, fatal push here, sure. It kind of speaks volume to people talking about that board overboard and graveyard hate. The fact that they still have fatal push in their deck post board probably signifies that they don't have a ton of great cards to bring in here. If I had to venture, I guess. So definitely censor. I think Opus is the second discard. I want to keep the Sublime Epiphany. Yeah, yeah, Hearst and Trespass are just kind of generically good cards. It deals damage, but I want to counter. I have still 10 more damage to play with this turn, they lose the game. All right, I think I just attack. I think we attack for five and then pass the turn. I'm going to put this into play tapped because I'm planning to Sublime Epiphany this turn is my plan. We don't, we don't have any creatures that they can push without Revolt, though. I guess I guess that's fair. They they can't know exactly what kind of creativity list we're playing, right? Oh, the fable tokens only t only zero. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that one. These are a few of my favorite things. The rainbow counter spell chip. Like I said, chip. 
Their deck, their deck is incredibly fair. It's really a pretty reasonable tier zero deck to have in the format. Oh, apologies, I forgot to give you a warning. We're gonna look at my ugly face large. We're uh, restarting the client here so we can have a little bit of audio for a match or two as a treat. Chat's, chat's been very good today, so they can have a little bit of audio. We had a, we had a client patch yesterday, right? I'm not making that up. And this bug didn't get fixed. Hey chat, does anybody know, does the audio bug exist on the mobile client? Or should I install this in BlueStacks and switch to playing Magic Arena Mobile until they fix it? Anybody, anybody know? This is a semi-real suggestion. That'll do it. I'll fire up BlueStacks in the background and get it downloading right now. My phone has been fine on audio, but it crashes after three to five games. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shit. Chad, I got some bad news. We are definitely the bad guy, Chip. We are certainly not the good person in the interaction that is occurring on your screen. Some stories have good guys, some stories have bad guys. Today, today is the tale of us being a bad man. Your finest Torrential Gear Hulk, please. All right, so bounce, you, copy you, I draw a card. Second Gear Hulk fires up the Magma Opi. Opi! I think waiting for them to cast the spell is too greedy. I just don't want them to get an attack in. This is our first really big turn four we've had like this. But yeah, this is this is the this is the this is the turn four we're going for, chat. This is the the over the top payoff. It was our first first big full pop up. That's why the epiphanies are there. Pippity poppity, the fun don't stop it. Is it an assailable board state? Wizard seems to think it's pretty assailable, Chet. Why, why would wizards lie to me? One of their most loyal, one of their most loyal suckers. Sorry, I mean customers. Uh, we actually haven't tried post-nerf Winota. Should that be our historic deck today? I hadn't decided what we were doing in historic today. Should we should we build nerfed Winota and kick the tires on her?
Do you play as Percentile? That's a cheap non-human. All right, it's a cheap human. That doesn't trigger when you attack. Feeling pretty creative today. Nothing, nothing but assailable board states here, chat, on the fourth turn of the game. Nothing but assailable board states here. How do they nerf Winona? She only triggers once per attack. So she can't, she can't get multiple things. I mean, they nerfed all the good decks, so yeah, the pretty typical outcome after they nerf all the good decks is people people play other things, Space Martian. Alright, if there is a Magma Opus or another Sublime Epiphany in our top two cards here, our opponent is uh, gonna get torched. I'll take a big score, and I'll do pig. It's a fine consolation prize. Get your board states! Assailable board states here! I think assailable board states might be my new favorite Watsy meme. It's just, it's just such a good... Assailable board states and removal check gameplay chat. So Aether Gust is good. Negate, probably not. Sensor seems okay. They've got some bigger spells. Trim a big score, call it a day. The solo cues be wild in the vet ranks, Bazipples.
mean, it's not like this deck is skipping playing Agent of Treachery if it's for, like, some public service. We're not playing Agent of Treachery because it's worse than playing Gear Hulk in this show. Six mana this turn. I advise that you yield. Wait, right, so that turns off my treasures. We are hoping to draw. Uh, we wanted to draw a Magma Opus there, but we hit the land at least, so we got that going for us. Oh, this only does creatures. I should have attacked card. Hey, Natter Jack. Thank you for the 48 months. I appreciate the support. Welcome back. I don't understand, Chet. People, I, they keep conceding on turn four to my various saleable board states. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of good things about the boss rush mode. But people that didn't see it, Pokemon Unite released their anniversary mode. Or a new game mode with their anniversary release. Where it's kind of like a MMO style raid boss that you fight. That seems neat. Need to poke at that at some point when I'm done being addicted to laddering up. Yeah, yeah, it's like a PvE experience. I need to load it up with Christy and the kids and give it a try. All right, so control matchup. Big score is super mediocre. Our hand in general is actually pretty mediocre here. Or your prophecy is also not great. All right, tip land is better than missing, I suppose. What's going on, Ghosted? Thanks for the 37 months. Welcome back. It's a real shame we didn't have it on tip lands here. People. Protect the people. We're portable holding one of my treasure tokens. Okay. Guards, to me.
You do this in response, right? They could have like a main deck dispute, but I don't think I jammed this in a post board game, but in in game one, I think we just jammed this here. Our swords will cross again. You have spent a card to kill my 4-4 divination. Hasn't even drawn that many lands this game either. They must, they probably have like a bunch of sweepers and stuff in their hand that just like don't line up particularly well too. Both, both sides here probably have a lot of dead cards game one. Just giving up on creativity chat. We're gonna put childish things aside, get a real job. No creativity left. What do we think of counter this bounce fable? I think we're chilling on the sensor for now. They've got like the deluge in the bin. They've got Tefries. They're stuck on five lands. So I'm gonna leave that up rather than cycling it. Ditch command and creativity here. We do have a sublime in there to pair with this torrential gear hulk. Got him. Draw now in case we had a land. The sensor up. imagine there's some amount of sweepers. I think I'm actually just submitting zero here. Slag, bull chillin'. Yo, dog, I heard you like deluge. Now you can deluge into your deluge. I think we're at the start tapping out for Magma Opus during your end step portion of the game, right?
Just like work our way through the whatever counter spells they have in their hand. Yeah, they almost assuredly have some amount of counter spells in their hand. Although, if they don't sweep the board this turn, we can make a bunch of copies. Yeah, if you're someone that likes, like, Slay the Spire style single player stuff, the, the Rune Terra single player mode is really good. For sure, for sure. They're gone, friends. We knew, we knew that was coming. Do you all see me? I haven't disconnected. My client's hanging, not my internet. Oh, their timer is ticking down. Okay. Well. At least it's not on me, shit. What's going on, monkey? Thanks for the 32 bucks. Welcome back. Oh, I'd like to cast Torrential Gear Hulk, please. You know what's awesome, chat? The turn 40 sensor that's live. The classic turn 40 sensor. Now, there, there's no guarantee we win the game next turn. Our opponent could have another sweeper in hand, but then we do just get to try and set back up again after that. They notably have six, seven, eight, nine mana, 10, so they can't quite deluge and, and what's it called? And sweep. I would like to attacks for lethal, please. But what if instead we didn't do that? I think Parting in Storms right here actually sounds okay because of their uh, Emperor. We trim Big Score and Fire Prophecy. We bring in Negate, Mystic Dispute, commence the end game. Oh, this is probably a Fry matchup too, huh? Fry me a river, baby. Do I cut? Is it some creativities out? We mostly just bend our creativities, right? We're on the hard cast our stuff plan. We'll even like a couple to like skill check them slash keep them honest in spots, but yeah, that's that's probably it. Not some lands, trust me, I'm a magic player. Thanks for the 42 months, Chase. Welcome back.
Ah, uh, our audio is done being a treat, Chet. There shall be, there shall be no more audio. One point five matches. I'm pretty sure it was one point five games. Pretty sure we restarted before this match. No joke, if untapped worked through the arena mobile client, I would I would load this shit up in blue stacks so fast. I almost feel like we should for posterity's sake to debug and see if it happens there. Uh, the bulk of the songs that stick with me from my theater days are songs intended for three and four year olds because the most shows I did was with the children's theater company. You play exclusively on mobile and have not experienced the bug yet. God, don't tempt me, chat. I do, I do often say we're a full-time mobile game stream. Maybe we'll do it next week for the memes. I don't I don't want to wait for it to download midstream. I'll load it up in blue stack so we could do it for the memes. What's going on, silly cheese? Six to three and a half years. And now they get to stick a threat while we're tapped out. Alright, game three on the play. I haven't played the PC client in a while, mostly because if I'm on my PC, I want to play a real game, not a slot machine. <laughs> oh, it hurts. It's funny because it's true. Got huge tricks, Chet. It's glorious. Glorious huge tricks. I get vetoed here, but I think getting veto out of their hand is fine. Deal. What's going on, bread boxer. Magic is nice and quiet. Gives us contemplative time with ourselves. Some people like magic cards for the artwork and holding the real thing. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a, there's chat, there are eight 
Magic the Gathering cards sitting here on my desk. There are my four altered 8th edition black bordered Birds of Paradise that I played all of my tournaments with. There are Court of Calling, Kiki Jiki, and Restoration Angel, also tournament memories. And then for the sake of stream memes, I also have one copy of the silver bordered card timeout. Which my camera is apparently having a difficult time focusing on. Where is Rowlet? Justice for Rowlet, chat. Justice for Rowlet. Sweepers in their deck post board against me. It's always curious to know exactly how people are going to approach a matchup like this. Because sometimes, sometimes people will leave sweepers in and sometimes they won't. These spirits are going the distance. They're going for speed. They're all alone in this time of need. Do 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 A piece of candy. Slowly chipping away at my opponent, it just doesn't feel the same. In a spot like this. There's no, there's no sound to make it feel good. Commence the end game, chat. One end game, please. Wow, that just happened. All right, your move, Yugi boy. What an aptly named Magic the Gathering card. What an aptly named Magic the Gathering card. You think you just have like a grip full of vetoes muttering silently to themselves? Vetoes, vetoes, it absorbs. Little did they know, steady as she goes. Do 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 wrong to play this on blue on one, but I kind of want to cycle sensor.
encounter the draw two here, given the opportunity. Really surprised they didn't do that when we were tapped out after we cycled the sensor. It puts the cauldron familiar on the skin or else it gets the house again. Deck for fuck's sake. <sighs> We've drawn three extra cards, Jet. Can't be choosers chat, but that island there is one of only three lands in our deck that didn't make red man up to draw. Also, never been land screwed like this on mobile. I will not confirm or deny if this is a dirty lie and attempt you to try it out on blue stacks. <laughs> um. This is unscientific, and I'm not allowing people to purchase boats. What? Would you prefer working audio untapped overlay? I'm, I'm curious what people prefer. If there's a preference one way or the other for untapped to work or for there to be functional audio. Agent 23, thank you for the 10 months. Welcome back. This is incredibly unscientific and we might try it regardless, but I'm curious to see where people fall. I don't really have good sideboard cards here. I've got like some angers, I guess, and this, but by and large, this matchup seems kind of bad for us. Yeah, I think there's a chance that audio is more important. Everybody, everybody that watches on YouTube automatically votes for audio because like they don't, they don't watch anyways. And I answer early 2000s bug pop chips. You just turn on the Paramore chip. Listen, chat, I'm not saying my daughter's named after Haley Williams from Paramore, but she could also be named after Eminem's daughter. So you can leave that up as an exercise to the viewer where that name came from. Oh, I will definitely spoil her and tell you she's not named after a piece of rock in the, in the sky.
uh, Haley has my wife's middle name as her middle name. Lynn, Lynn is my wife's middle name and Haley's middle name. And then Jacob and Declan have my first name and middle name as their middle names. So Jacob, Jacob is Jacob Jeffrey and Declan is Declan Scott. So they, all, they all have a little bit of us. You might be dead, fam. The 6040 vote for working audio over the untapped overlay is actually the single most decisive two vote option I have ever put up on Twitch. In fact, it might be the single most decisive two vote option that's ever been cast to the history of Twitch. But the history of sauces. Baby sauces is called working no baby sauces is all about and I dumb for Thank you, my child. I appreciate you. He brought he brought me my leftover sandwich from dinner last night to eat, Chip. He's a good he's a good lad. I don't know if this is good. They get to like crew their. Oh, they didn't crew the hearse. Uh, deal. All right. Sure. Weird. Point. Her yesterday was all right. I like the Echo Zillion deck a lot. Pre predictably, the Rune metrics were pretty mediocre, though, so unfortunately, I don't think we'll be revisiting it outside of the sponsored segment because there's really just not an audience for that game. Rune has like three big content creators that all of the people that play that game watch and then they just don't watch anybody else that makes stuff for it. That's just how it be. I appreciate the 50 months though, welcome back. All right chat, for the sake of the memes and the audio, I'm gonna install Magic Arena on BlueStack, so we're gonna play, we're gonna play Arena Mobile on Monday, for the sake of seeing if the audio bug isn't ex in existence there. Yeah, yeah, Mogwai, Mogwai is like the biggest tier creator. Mogwai and then um, Grappler are the two big ones. There are several mobile players in the stream, Marty, that said they've never had the audio bug on mobile. So I think there's a good chance it's just, uh, what am I getting rid of here? That's probably one of the three mana things, right?
this still holding sensor up here? I would be astounded if they got Magic Arena to run on the Nintendo Switch hardware. The Nintendo Switch is basically a potato that hooks a, that a controller hooks into. He did say Arena is coming to consoles next year. But that doesn't necessarily mean Switch, right? You could use a mouse and keyboard on... The PlayStation Xbox. Like, yeah, that's true, but that's also not the use case anybody's using them for. That's, like, not really relevant. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be on those platforms, you're going to be on them with, uh... You're gonna be on them with controller support. Sixty-one percent. That's enough votes to break a filibuster. That's true, you know. You started this, fight, but I'm going to end it. Your blade strike true. I know hold that thought. Whoa! They don't have a counter spell up. If I do this and I hit a land, I could get two gear hulks here. Untap land. Oh, they have March. They have March, Jet. That's fine. I still get one gear. Okay.
should have seen that coming. That deck seems pretty good at grinding out blue white. Our opponent is playing at a good pace, which is much appreciated. Because, because I'm eating my lunch, I'm actually down a minute on clock here, which is pretty rare. I love me a turn 40 sensor chat. It's my kink. The saw coming? It is. Okay. So shit, we don't have one more land. Right, negates the solid pickup. Eighteen cards left in our deck. We actually haven't drawn any of our three sublime epiphanies yet this game, huh? We're just chilling, right? <laughs> Opponent's got 30, 30 cards in their deck after this resolves. We just have like 17. Welcome to the grind, baby. Welcome to the jungle, baby. Batcaster Mage is a lovely boy, Chip. Lovely boy. 
Magic Arena created the sound of silence. Oh, do you have epiphany? No, nah, it's just so powerful. I have so many things they want to dispute. You just like, except you're gonna get disputed at some point. And, uh, and roll with it. Watch you had to pay Simon and Garfunkel every time the audio broke when they have fixed it by now. 100%. Is there a number greater than 100%? Because then that. Uh, sure. This actually works out great. We hit the land anyways, and we get to stick, uh, Fable the Mirror Breaker. Allow me to tell you the song of my people. Uh, I mean, we just put a bunch of gear hulks into play, right? It's like make them have a sweeper. Yeah, I bet. I bet they board out their sweepers for more counter spells, assuming we're not going to get on the board. Uh, the, the latter, Hama Hut. It's not that untapped causes the audio bug, it's that if we play on the mobile client, we untapped won't work with it. Alright, we're gonna play like one or two more matches with this while I finish my lunch. And then I think we're gonna try and brew Winota and Historic. Since they nerfed our girl and unbanned her there. Yeah, this is one of the this is one of the better performing decks in this format, Drunko. Has really, really good stats on depth. What on avocado? Thanks for the twenty eight months. Welcome back. More Impixi. Yeah, our deck, our deck's like as close to Splinter Twin as you're gonna get in this format, I think.
What percentage are we against the Flash deck? Is there a number less than zero? El Jefe, thank you for the 21 months. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Score has not felt particularly good today. Can't rewind it. All right, I am not making... All right, I'm gonna cast this, and then when this gets countered, I'm gonna concede the match. Listen, chat, you have to accept that sometimes they want it more than you do. And your polarized matchups go both ways in these formats. Hopefully our opponent will queue into mono red for their next two to three matches. Lose every single one, but uh, we'll slide along. Just don't give them the satisfaction of getting to play their rewind deck against your Gearhulk deck, you know? That's fun for them, it's not fun for you. Get our big score in there while they're tapped out. Likes to target these, please. <clears throat> they have a Prismari command here. They can shatter one to deny me a gear hulk. And if they have a second command for next year, they can shatter the other gear hulk. But there's also an opus in my bin, so I'll go 4 and draw some cards.
no sublime epiphanies or opus. Okay, there's a sublime epiphany. No sublime epiphanies or opus in there, but yet it's good for us. The epiphany means if they, you know, I wonder, maybe I'm, this one. Our Soaring City can kill their Gear Hulk token they get from Sublime Epiphany. And then the Prismari Command can shatter the other one. But they're gonna get to shatter mine, so we're basically both just gonna go to empty boards here. And hey, thanks for stopping by to drop off that Prime for the third year. Is our guest appreciate it? Well, I'll bounce my token, draw a card. One of Gaspar's Mari can be end. The opponent's deck is total BS, mood. Oh, really? They're not shattering the other one. Interesting. Their hand must be bad. So I can go shock shatter soaring city clear the token crack you for five. Could get two more hulks. Not this turn. I don't have enough mana. I get I get one more hulk. But if I if I cast this to make a treasure that costs me three, and then I'd have three lands and two treasures left over. They have eight mana available here, so they can magma opus this turn. Smart, they did it while I was tapped out. Wow, they just took the hit. Okay, um, ha. Huh. It's like Gear Hulk, shock them, draw two, discard two. plan say go if prismari commands in their bin they have another creativity we're in trouble 
already threw two of those. Are they going to go get all three gear hulks here? So, this is actually kind of funny. So, them going to get all three gear hulks here is actually kind of okay for us because now they're out of creatures and I can creativity to destroy all three of their gear hulks. And, and their token, right? It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take eight damage here. They're going to draw some cards, but my indomitable creativity is actually just Plague Wind next turn, right? Uh, this uh, hidden mode on creativity, like interact with your opponent's board. And then they're at four, and I've only cast one opus and one command at this point, so they're definitely in like get burned out range. Long friends. And I actually get to just look at the rest of their deck here. So they have one magma opus, two magma opus. Yeah, I actually just look at their play the same list we are, right? Oh, it flipped over multiple times here, right? Is that how that works? Or no? With 22 cards. I don't actually know. It's hard to, hard to tell from the user interface there exactly what's going on. I felt like it was more than 22 cards. Yeah, it was four copies of the deck. Okay. There's two gear hogs left in my deck, right? Do I kill their thing or do I get two gear hogs? I probably don't need two gear hogs, right? I'm gonna leave I don't leave one in my deck. I'm gonna kill their thing. We taught them the other way to use creativity. We did. Okay, and then big score gives us two mana here. This has been a really weird mirror. If four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. Oh, 
Ähm. Not a magma opus. Three, three opus and 30 cards, Chip. That's scary. You're also at four now. They're through three opus. They're through three opus and all their Prismari commands. Is that it? Have we won the war? One mana up. Should be good. Opa! So fire prophecies, kind of whatever. Big score gets even worse post board. Aether gust, negate, dispute, commence the end game all sound good. That was definitely a game one, I agree. One, one game of Magic the Gathering has now been played. A board out of creativity, I think it's a little worse post board. Maybe Lantern is good enough here. It disrupts our creativity because it's an artifact, but the game goes long enough that maybe it's worthwhile. Maybe we're just supposed to go down all of the creativities in this matchup, although using it to kill their stuff felt pretty good there. I keep this hand on the draw chat. I think this is a match that's about resources and grinding here a little bit. Again, we just like to uh, gamble. We hit our lands two and three. They have Fable on curve here. Yeah, that's real bad for us. We hit we hit our land drop, but it was the one we really didn't want to hit. Okay, we at least also have Fable on curve. The downside here is theirs gonna get to make a treasure because they were on the play. I assume they're gonna kill ours. Didn't kill ours, at least not yet. Huh. 
Huh. I wasn't prepared for that to just happen, chat. Interesting. Shock their thing, make a treasure token. I think I want to put Nagit down this turn. Getting a dispute on a command as opposed to a gear hulk seems good. I have an opus in there. Could see a creativity for a few here. The way they use the dispute proactively makes me think they're about to creativity and then dispute our dispute our negate or negate or negate or whatever. It's quicker game than the first. Yeah, stumble it, stumble it early. Getting a mana advantage early here seems huge. We keep the opus because it makes the opus makes any future creativity or gear hulk we draw much better. Yeah, I agree with BTY's take two bows. Sounds slower and a little less consistent. Being the first to Fable is such a big deal, but they have Sensor up, so I don't think I can just jam here. What if I shatter their thing, make a treasure? Well, I can play this around sensor now. Obviously, we could still get disputed or negated, but I don't really have solid answers to those things at the moment. So I think we just got to go. It's definitely a very real possibility. I'm just not patient enough for these matchups. They're just so playing. Playing these matchups optimally is just so dry. It reminds me of why I quit playing poker. A lot of it is just like sitting there doing nothing if you're playing optimally. Fold way more hands than you actually play. They left big score in post board. It's an interesting card to leave into a glut of counter spells. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna play Winota in historic after this.
Stick to speed and then die. Ooh, they didn't have it. It's exciting. Sometimes, sometimes lucky. Oh, and then we get to go now? Giddy up, cowboy. Yee-haw. We're gonna play in Snap. I think we're gonna play around with some uh, Jane Mighty Thor decks today. Since we whaled her out of the gotcha machine. She should be good in. She's good at Mr. Negative, and then I wanna try a more mid-range build where she enables Thor. Now they could just have a Gear Hulk of their own here. Okay, not looking like it. And with this attack here, I now have this up. Uh, 50 means he. Statistically, half of the time, you're gonna, you're just gonna take you a pity timer to get the card. So it's only a 1.5% chance. I was fortunate to not open the variant first, though, so... I got to, uh... Only... Do 50 pulls instead of 100. I just take this opportunity to do this, right? Sensor is funnier. You're correct. So by, I guess uh, all the roads led to victory there. Python's my favorite programming language by a lot. It's super easy and modular and has Plugins for everything you could think of. Yeah, I mean, it cuts the expected price in like half gap, if that was the case. This deck's really good. Uh, the mirror match is kind of stupid and dry, but it's powerful. You get to go ahead and just loop your thing into play. It creates very unassailable turn four board states where your opponent just like top rights and concedes very consistently. So definitely a good one if you're looking to find some ladder points in Explorer.